Good morning, Mount Calvary Church and School students. Pastor Jonathan with you, and this is my last time with you in our uh, devotions in the book of 1 Corinthians. And I hope you, like I, have enjoyed the teachings from Mr. Aled and Mr. Brussel and, and Ryan and Joe as we've walked through this book. And today we find ourselves again in 1 Corinthians 15, and this is the resurrection chapter. And we've said that, that the resurrection of Jesus changes everything. Not only does it change our eternity, but it should change our every day. And we're going to look at verses 29 to 38. And if you haven't had a chance to read that, pause the video and just read those verses. Well, in the beginning of our passage, the first few verses, 29 to 34, Paul is continuing the idea that's been communicated from the beginning of the chapter, that the resurrection of Jesus is essential to our faith. And specifically, he points out that and says it'd be pointless for us as believers to live the Christian life if there was no resurrection. And he uses two examples to kind of express that idea. The first example is the example of baptism. And he says, basically, why be baptized if there was no resurrection? And now these verses are talking about the resurrection of the dead. And that's kind of a kind of a weird thought. It's a weird idea. And there's lots of different things written about this in commentaries. But I think what they're talking about is in Corinth, some believers were, were being baptized for other believers who had died and not yet been baptized. It's kind of a weird thought. Now remember baptism, it's kind of a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and and and, it, and us being united with him, dying to our sin and being raised to a new life in Jesus. Now remember that baptism doesn't save us, but it's really a public declaration of our faith. It's confirming that we have placed our faith in Jesus and we want everyone to know. And I think the point that Paul is trying to make is, is if the resurrection didn't happen, then why is baptism so important? Then why were they so concerned about those who had died and not yet been baptized? If, if there was no resurrection, then, then why did baptism really matter? That's the first example that he used. The second example that he uses, he's talking about a life of ministry. Why would Paul risk his life and work tirelessly to, to spread and share the gospel of Jesus Christ? If you think about it, Paul and the other apostles, they faced many different hardships, many different struggles uh, for, for, the, for the spread of the gospel, to preach the gospel. They, they sacrificed many things to communicate the message of Jesus Christ. And if Jesus wasn't resurrected, Paul says, well, we could eat, drink, and be merry because we're going to die tomorrow. Uh, but Paul knows that living up in this life isn't the, isn't the right idea. It's not the way that he wants us to, to live. He doesn't want us just to pursue pleasure. Uh, and he also gives us a warning. He says, don't live your life like that and don't spend time with people who do. Don't be influenced by those who live their lives like, like the resurrection, like, like Jesus doesn't matter, like eternity doesn't matter, and, and just focus on you and just living for today and living for pleasure. He says, bad company corrupts good morals. So Paul kind of gives a warning. And now in the second half of our passage in verses 35 to 38, Paul uses an example to tell us that the resurrection is everywhere. And, and the Corinthians had two main questions when it came to the resurrection. I think they're pretty good questions. They're, they're questions that probably maybe even you thought of. How are the dead raised? And what kind of body will we have? And Paul says, hey, don't be foolish. The resurrection is everywhere. Just look at the planting of a seed. Now think about this. You take a little seed, it's just a little ugly kind of round thing, and you bury it in the ground. It dies and then it springs up into new life. It resurrects into a into wheat or to grain or, or, or to a flower. And 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 the, the thing that God designed it to become. And it looks like it looks nothing like the seed that it was. And it becomes a new life. And I think that's kind of the idea that uh, that the resurrection is kind of trying to communicate. In in a commentary that I read, Pratt, Pratt's commentary says this: Paul said, in effect. Believers will have the kind of body that God has determined they will have. Resurrected bodies will be different from mortal bodies, just as a seed is different from the plant into which it grows. Though, pot, though Paul did not answer the immediate question, what kind of body, he did answer the objection that God could not raise the dead. God displays his sovereign ability and desire to raise the dead each time he grows a seed into a plant. And so he says, hey, the resurrection's everywhere. 
And, and just as the seed dies and grows into a, a, a new plant, we, we will one day die and get resurrected new bodies. And so from our passage here in, in 1 Corinthians 15, we see that the resurrection is essential. And examples of it are everywhere. And it affects not only our eternity, but it hopefully it affects our everyday, how we, how we live our lives, our, our faith, our hope, and our actions. And so hopefully we are encouraged by the resurrection. It gives us purpose. It gives us focus on how to live our lives. And it gives us a hope that we will one day spend eternity with Jesus in those resurrected bodies. Hey, have a great week.